Hi right, guys, welcome back to The Governor. Today we are joined by my new assistant, Jet, who is also my godson. So this show is going to be called The Governor and the Godson. Jet, say hello. Hello everybody. <laughs> so Jet's here to help me today to review a couple of cars. And the reason that it is, is the reason that is, is because Jet was good enough to bump into a couple of very kind people one afternoon who have a fabulous, a couple of fabulous cars and they have agreed to let us review their cars. So to my left we have the new iteration of the Vantage Aston Martin F1 edition and next to that we also have a McLaren MP4 C12. So first of all, we're going to take a, a look at this Aston Martin uh, F1 edition Vantage um, and me and Jetty are going to walk around the car and Jetty's going to help me point out some, um, <laughs> sorry, some interesting parts on the car. So obviously it's in the, this stunning uh, British racing green um, and it has 21 inch wheels on the front, 21 inch on the back. Obviously huge uh, brake calipers there I'm not sure, and, and discs. Not sure what size they are. I think they're 340s. They might be a little bit larger, maybe 380s. Um, what else have we noticed, Jet? The F1 badge. The F1 badge. Now, the F1 <laughs> badge is because obviously Aston Martin has got back into F1 racing, and this is a nod to their F1 racing team, and also as well to the uh, safety cars that do come out on the tracks in certain uh, F1 race tracks around the world where they are now the uh, safety car so also as well as you can see we've got a beautiful carbon fiber finished uh, wing mirror here okay and obviously the typical or should I say beautiful design of an Aston Martin that works really well do you want to open the door Jet and get in that's it what do you think Jet very soft is it and what else how else is it feels it still a bit chunky in your hand yeah it's chunky right what what's behind the uh, that's only to me because <laughs> i'm smaller than everybody that's right and what about what about the uh the shift paddles behind the steering wheel so one is up and one is down right so you've got the pluses and the minuses behind the steering wheel that change the gear setting from first second third fourth and so on as you can see inside the car, there's lots of carbon fiber and Alcantara um, uh, trim. Oh, oh yeah. Yes. Okay, so here we are inside the Aston Martin. As you can see, this is a completely new design inside. Um, the Gone is the waterfall uh, cascade and this more racing inspired uh, design, I would gather. F1 edition badge. F1 edition badge again. Um, obviously, this mm. infotainment system is taken from Mercedes, uh, but obviously, Aston Martin have updated it and made it to their requirements, which of course works well. We all know that that type of system is, is well used and uh, well documented that it's a great system. Um, obviously, inside here, it's a beautiful, cozy environment. Um, iPad, <laughs> it's like an iPad, yeah, a small, one. a small one, that's right, it's only a small one, I think that's only 8 inches screen, which is more than enough that you need for this type of car. Um, obviously they've updated the steering wheel a little bit here um, and put more buttons around the steering wheel um, to uh, make things a lot more easier when you're driving to change settings and bits and pieces, but a lot of the things here that Aston Martin do that people don't, so you have the uh, push buttons for the gears gears drive neutral and reverse and park um, and then obviously down the side here you've got your um, different types of buttons for your media control as etc carbon fiber around here that's right carbon fiber around there still got two cup holders of course very important in modern cars so you can get your coffee in the morning 
And obviously sitting in here, it's a amazing view over the front of the bonnet. As you can see, looking out across the bonnet, you see the, um, the uh, top of the arches of the wheels. And uh, obviously it gives you a fantastic perspective when you're driving. So now guys, we're gonna pop the bonnet and have a look at this uh, Aston Martin Vantage's engine. And uh, let's have a look, Jenny, shall we? So, ready? One, two, three, that's it, lift it up. Wow. So, Jenny, you can read that. So can you see what that bit says at the top here? Aston Martin. And it says, what does it say? It says, hand built in. Great Britain. Britain. Okay, and the final inspection by Ahmed Minia. Okay, I want to make sure I get it right. So obviously this is a hand-built Aston Martin engine. Obviously the basis of this engine, as we all know, is from a C63. We have the strut bar. We do have a beautiful strut bar there. The twin turbos coming up here with the air induction that comes out here. Okay, and the turbos go over the top of the engine and in there, so that makes the V a lot better in performance. It works a lot better, much more efficient. Okay, Jetty, we're standing here next to the wheels. So where's the engine positioned? It's behind the wheels or in front of the wheels? It's behind the wheels. It's behind the wheels, right? So that means that the engine is a mid-mounted engine, right? Okay, so that pushes more of the weight of the engine towards the middle, the center of the car, which gives it better stability for handling, high speed handling, and just better all overall handling abilities for a, for a high end sports car. Okay, so there's a big difference when the engines are sat behind the wheel or in front of the wheel. Okay, Jenny, let's open the doors and let's talk about the doors, right? Why the doors are designed the way they are in an Aston. So that's it, pull the door open, nice and gently, that's it. So if we come here in front of the car a little bit to the side, there you go. What's the difference between that door and a normal car door? It's a swan door. It's a swan door, that's right. Because Aston Martin like to have their doors that come up, out and up, should I say, in, a, in that swan-like nature. Okay. It's a farming port. Hi <laughs> right, guys, right, so here we are, sorry, at the back of the Aston here. And as I was just explaining to Jetty, this here is the indicators, okay? And then this bit up here, and this is, what's this bit here, Jetty? Light bar. The light bar and the, and the brake lights, right? Okay, they come all the way along here, because obviously this Aston here has got a double spoiler, so it has a lower spoiler here, like a duck spoiler. Okay, so it looks like the shape of a duck's bum. Okay, and then obviously we've got the F1 inspired spoiler at the back here but also what's really important is if we come down here here we have the integrated diffuser here obviously this bit here is very flat under the car that helps the air flow faster underneath the car to make the car hold the ground better at higher speeds and obviously this design here is to integrate the exhausts on both sides the twin exhausts and what we'll do in a minute is we'll get the keys and we'll start it up and we'll get that beautiful sound of the Aston Martin that no other car sounds like an Aston Martin, should I say. So now what we're gonna do, guys, is we're gonna to listen to this beautiful Aston Martin and we're gonna rev it a little and um, Jet is gonna to explain to you what it sounds like from the rear of the vehicle. That's a quick look around the Aston Martin, and now it's the time to look around the beautiful McLaren MP4 C12. So here we are with the McLaren MP4 12C, exactly, in this magnificent orange that uh, this car was, I believe, it was their flagship color, and um, not quite sure. But Jet is going to show us something. Jet is going to show us how, with no door handles, you open the door. Push it a bit harder. There you go. Now lift it up. That's it. Well done. So, looking inside this McLaren, do you want to jump in, Jenny? Okay, so, see this bit here? This is the carbon fibre tub that you just climbed over. 
okay so this car has got a carbon tub monocoque cell that your car is built around okay obviously we've got the mclaren uh, steering wheel that was designed allegedly by um lewis hamilton okay so it's shaped on his hands and how he gripped the steering wheel when he was working and driving for mclaren at the time back in back in the day and then here in the central column here you have all the um, I might jump in the other side once. Okay, Jenny, so in the car here, in this central column here, where everybody normally puts all the stuff for the air conditioning and your entertainment system, McLaren did something different. Obviously, they put the start stop button here, okay, and then they put all the switches here for setting the car up for how you want it, for on track or for road. So, this is the aero button. This is the aero buttons here. So all of this is for controlling the car for your stability and traction for when you're on the racetrack. And this is what I found out. Yeah? What's that? You hold this for 10 seconds and then these for 10 seconds. And it puts it out of traction control. So it turns the traction control off, it does it? It makes it fun. It makes it more fun. Because what, do you know what type of car this is? This is a, where does the power go on this car? To the front wheel, wheels the or the rear. rear wheels? So once we turn the traction control off, it means you can do loads of donuts and skid it around. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, that's so obviously right. Obviously the interior of this car, Jenny, is all foot covered in leather, Alcantara and carbon fiber, right? Yeah. Okay, like the, most, of the, most of this car is built on, a carbon, on carbon fiber. Okay, the other things that's quite interesting that they, McLaren did that not other car manufacturers have done is that you see you only have one air vent here, one in the middle and one on the driver's side over there, right? So what happens if somebody wants to use the middle one, right? But what's really clever is up here on each door is this is my side for the air conditioning and on the driver's side, it's exactly the same. So you can, you can, um, change the air temperature and uh, speed of the air individually on each door so it gives it very personal for each person sitting in the car which normally there's two here right yeah. in most cars where you have to give it direction to where you want it to go so Aston Martin came up with something very unique and yeah, different for that McLaren, McLaren. why does I say Aston Martin? It's great it's a McLaren Okay, so Jenny, we're going to talk about the doors on the McLaren now, right? Like we spoke about the doors on the Aston. So, what style of doors are these called? Butterfly. Butterfly doors, correct, Butterfly right? Doors, yeah. Also, they could be called dihedral doors, okay? Because the way they're pivoted to the car, okay? So, they come up and out. So, saves yeah. a bit of space. So when you're opening the car in this closed space, they don't take up so much room. And also probably makes it a little bit easier to get in and out. Even though, as Jenny's gonna show us, even though right now, Jenny's gonna show us, this is not the easiest of car to get into, is it Jenny? Right, go on then, go have a go, right? That's it, because what do you have to do? Again, you've got to slide your bum across the carbon fiber top here, right? It makes it a little bit awkward. What do you think? It's a bit hard. It's a bit hard. So, all right, let's have a go. Let's see if you can come out as elegantly as he went in. Oh, it's a little bit easier, but I think you are the perfect size for a McLaren to get in and out of because of... Okay, guys, so now I'm going to try and get in the car as elegantly as possible. I won't do it as well as Jet, but uh, let's have a go anyway, right? Okay, so... Come on, old man! <laughs> Okay, there you go. I'm in. I'm in. So obviously sitting here in the McLaren is a completely different uh, experience to sitting in the Aston Martin. This is a lot more obviously racing car inspired. You can see straight over the um, wheel arches here and the nose just disappears towards the tarmac, which obviously gives you an amazing aspect of the road. You sit here, everything looks exactly where it needs to be. So I'd imagine driving this must be absolutely amazing obviously with the amazing 3.8 4 litre twin turbo in-house built mclaren engine that has roughly 460 kilowatts 616 brake horsepower and somewhere in the region of 600 newton meters of torque 
this thing does zero to 60 in less than, or zero to 100, should I say, in less than uh, two point, sorry, 3.1 seconds, and top speed of 202 miles an hour, which is just over 330 kilometers an hour. And um, even by today's standards, in a 10 year old, nearly 10, 10 year old car, it's well up there. There's not much more quicker than this out there on the roads today. So now we're going to have a look at the frunk, as Jet just said. What's it called? A frunk. A frunk. So we're going to have a look at the frunk, pressing this button here. Okay, and also, just here, on the centre console, also we're going to have a look at the uh, the engine bay. So we'll also... Yeah. The bonnet. Where's the switch? Oh, I got it. There we go. So we open this up, and here we have... What do we call this? A frunk. A front boot, right? Okay, so hang on a minute. Let's, uh, let's see... Let's see how big this frunk is. Sit down. Wow. Right, we can go out for the day now, right? What do you reckon? Pretty comfy? No? Come on in, let's get up. <laughs> so as we can see, so as we can see, this is where you can go and do your shopping, right? Put your shopping in there, there's enough there for what? And maybe a small suitcase for a long weekend. If you're going away for the weekend, you can put a suitcase in there, right? So let's go around the back here. All right, can you see anywhere on the car jetty that's hidden where maybe the, uh, the buttons are to open the hatch for the engine bay? You're looking on the door? Ah, oh, there we go. So that button there, Jetty, is to open up the uh, cover for the engine bay. And that one there, that button there, is for when the car, if, and unfortunately the car breaks down, it goes into tow mode. So you can actually tow the car away safely without damaging the car and the alarm not going off. So, Jetty, let's come round over here. Now, I'm going to have to do this, I think, because I'm not sure if you're going to be tall enough, buddy. So, what we'll do is, we'll just slowly lift this up. And here we can see, can you see that? You can see that. So that is the masterpiece that McLaren built and engineered for this car. So this is the 3.8 litre V8 twin turbo in-house McLaren built, built engine, propelling this amazing machine to about 202 miles an hour, 330 odd kilometers an hour. Um, in, in this tiny little space, if you can't, you can't actually see the size of the engine, but I promise you, it's pretty small compared to the size of the car. And considering the amount of power that it gets out of, when you're looking at the Aston Martin engine, is quite significantly bigger, and it's about the same sort of power. And power with newton meters are a little bit up, but it's about the same sort of power. And this is a 12, 10 year old car. Also as well, the other thing with uh, McLaren here, you see the spoiler here, Jetty? Okay, so what do we know about this spoiler? What, has, what happens to this spoiler when you step on the brakes? It, it goes straight. It goes straight, straight up like this, doesn't it? And it becomes an air brake, right? So it helps slow down the car at high speed so you can bring the car back into control really quickly. So as we can see the back end of the car here and a typical McLaren uh, design here is that the exhaust pipes come straight out of the engine. So if you think where the engine's sitting there, Jetty, these come straight out of the engine here, okay? There's only a few brands that really do that nowadays, okay? And obviously they're all high-end sports cars. So McLaren were one of the first to stop this, uh, to introduce this style of exhaust system, and they still do to this day. What are you gonna do now for us now, Jetty? I'm gonna start her up. You're gonna start her up, okay. So foot on the brake. And we press the start stop button there in the middle. That's it. Go press it oh. again. Hold it in. Hold it in. It is in. No, no, hold the button. That's it. Wow. So let's jump out. You've got to tell me what this one sounds like. Yeah?
sign off. Obviously, many, many thanks to the uh, amazing owners of these two vehicles, David and Hope. They know who they are. Thank you very much for the opportunity to review your cars and get the, the uh, amazing joy uh, of being in them when they're uh, being driven. Um, so don't forget, you got to like and subscribe to the channel. And smash the bell. Smash the bell, okay? Smash the like button so me and the governor and can do more reviews of cars like these two.